In this video, you'll learn about one of the oldest international accounting standards, and that is IAS2 Inventory. This standard was issued for the first time in 2003. Welcome along. Hello and welcome to the accounting feed. My name is Philan and I'm your host for this session. According to IAS2, inventories are assets 1. Held in the ordinary course of business, so these are finished goods. 2. In the process of production, that is, work in progress. And 3. In the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in rendering of services, so we can call these raw materials. Depending on the nature of the entity, inventory can be a significant part of the transactions or balances. Therefore, it is important to ensure its accuracy. Inventory affects both profits and assets. And this is how. First, opening inventory and closing inventory appear in the statement of profit or loss as part of the calculation of cost of sales. This is done as follows. You take the opening inventory and you add purchases during the year and then you deduct closing inventory. Closing inventory also appears in the statement of financial position as an asset. As such, any inaccuracy in the valuation of inventory will lead to erroneous values of profits and assets. And as you can see in my sample statement of financial position, inventory appears as a current asset along with the rest of current assets there including receivables, cash at bank and cash in hand. Please take note of this. First, opening inventory. These are goods held by the business at the start of the year. That means they are brought forward from the previous year. Such goods will normally be sold during the year and that means that they cannot be classified as assets but will form part of the goods available for sale. This means that opening inventories are transferred to the trading account and the double entry in this case therefore becomes debit cost of sales which is an item of statement of profit or loss and credit inventory assets which is an item of statement of financial position. Closing inventory. These are goods that remain unsold at the end of the accounting period. The value of closing inventory is accounted for in the nominal ledger by debiting inventory account and crediting the trading account. Inventory will therefore have a debit balance at the end of the period and this will be shown in the statement of financial position as we said earlier as a current asset. So the double entry therefore is debit inventory assets in the statement of financial position and credit cost of sales. Now the most important element in the standard that is identified is the valuation of inventory and according to IAS2 inventories should be measured at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Having said that let's start with net realizable value. Net realizable value is computed by deducting the selling costs from the expected selling price. Selling costs are any cost incurred to get the inventory ready for sale and then selling them. Such costs include repairs and commission paid to sales agents. Moving on to cost, please note that the standard allows us to use either of the following three methods of determination of cost. Number one, unit price. Number two, first in, first out, or what we call FIFO. Number three, weighted average cost, which can take the form of periodic weighted average or continuous weighted average. Continuous weighted average is also referred to as perpetual weighted average. Right off the back, it is important for us to note that LIFO, last in, first out, is not permitted by IAS2. So let's discuss each of these three methods individually starting with unit cost. Now unit cost includes purchase price plus any cost incurred to bring the inventory to their current location and condition. Such costs will include import duties and other taxes, insurance on transit, transport, freight charges and handling. In this case, any trade discounts and rebates will be deducted. In case of a manufacturing business, cost of conversion of raw materials to finished goods will be included as part of this cost. It must be noted, however, that this conversion cost can take two forms. Number one, 
costs that are directly attributed to the final product, such as direct materials and direct labor. We also have fixed and variable production overheads incurred in conversion of materials to finished goods. Inventory cost must however exclude the following. Number one, abnormal waste. Number two, storage costs. Number three, selling costs. Number four, administrative overheads unrelated to production. And finally, number five, foreign exchange differences. The second method of determining cost is first in first out. FIFO assumes that materials are issued out of the warehouse in the order in which they were received. In case of finished goods for sale, those goods that were purchased first will be the first ones to be disposed of. The method therefore ensures that inventory in the warehouse is made up of items purchased last and therefore they are valued at most recent prices. Moving on, weighted average cost. As we mentioned earlier, this can take the form of periodic weighted average and perpetual weighted average. Now when it comes to periodic weighted average, the calculation is done at the end of the period. The cost of inventory is determined as follows. Number one, sum up the units of opening inventory and purchases for the whole period. Secondly, sum up the costs of opening inventory and purchases. So we start with the units and then we go to the costs. Number three, divide the total cost obtained in the second step with the total units obtained in the first step. This will give you the weighted average cost of inventory. From here, deduct the number of units sold during the period from the total units in the first step and this will give you the closing inventory. The value of closing inventory will then be determined by multiplying the average unit cost we just determined and the number of units of closing inventory. As for perpetual weighted average, a new weighted average cost is computed for each sale based on the number of units available for sale at that time. To calculate the unit cost, determine the cost of goods available just before the sale and divide these by the units available at that very point. Once you get this, value the units sold using this average cost. Please take note of this as we wind up, that each method of determining cost produces different values of closing inventories. FIFO produces the highest cost, and that means if you use this method, your profits and assets would be more than if you had used the other two methods. So it is basically up to the entity itself to determine which method is best suited for their operations. This marks the end of my brief session on inventory. I hope you've learned a lot from this. In case you have any questions, do not hesitate to post it down below in the comments and I'll make sure that all the questions are answered. Please also, if you like what we do, subscribe to our channel, The Accounting Feed, to support us. Like as well and share. Don't be stingy. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.